also reproduce. If you don't reproduce disciples, you are a bad and Christian. God doesn't send anybody to hell. Their choice is send them to hell. Now, when they make a choice to repent of their sins, the love of God is welcoming. Amen. But they made a choice not to repent of their sin. The gates of hell open. You don't make hell with love. say to Daniel, the prince of Pesha resisted me, withstood me, they are withstanders. So I couldn't pass to deliver the, your luggage. You answer to your prayer from the day you set your face to seek God, the answer was released. And there are so many answers to your prayers that have been released long ago. But the prince over your lack, the prince in your family are withstanding your receiving the answer. You need supernatural help. Now you need the reinforcement of heaven. Praise God, viewers. You are welcome to this special episode. And we are so blessed of God to be given the honor and the privilege to reach out to you wherever you are. And much more those who are watching on the rig or in the office or in the car, wherever you are, you can receive this transmission. Um, we believe that God will reach out to you specially in the name of Jesus. In the series of the spirit of uncommon breakthrough that we started, we looked at what a breakthrough is. A breakthrough spirit is that spirit that helps you go beyond the limitations the enemy has placed before you. Satan has one mission on earth. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Nothing more. He turns that mission in various forms and comes, attack various people in various ways. But to, bottom line is one, the same mission. To kill, to steal, that's it. But you know, when God releases the spirit of uncommon breakthrough on you, that spirit of uncommon breakthrough helps you to go beyond the limitations of the enemy. That's a spirit that helps you bring you to your larger place and your larger life. And as we open up this segment of the teaching, my prayer is God will help you to grasp what it takes to provoke the spirit of uncommon breakthrough. Provoking the spirit of uncommon breakthrough. That's what we're looking at. Provoking the spirit of uncommon breakthrough. Now in Psalm 44 verse 5, the scripture says, through you we push back our enemies. And through your name we trample on our foes. So there are enemies in your journey of progress. There are foes. And their job is not to shake your hands. Their job is not to, to encourage you. Their job is to discourage you. Their job is to create limitations before you. Their job is to raise uh, barriers before you, but we're saying this. The scripture is saying it is through the power of God that you are able to push back, push down, trample on those barriers of the enemy. And it's important we understand this, that 
if you are going to push down the foes who are lined up against your business, your family, and your progress, you need this. Number one, you need the power of the Holy Ghost. Number two, you need the power in the name of Jesus. Those are two powerful forces revealed to us from Psalm chapter 44, verse 5. He said, only by your power. This is the NLT translation. Only by your power can we push back our enemies. A lot of people cannot explain why they are always in a circle. A lot of people cannot explain why do what they may do. They're just not finding uh, um, satisfactory progress in life. Now those are the powers that are placing limitations before you to just keep you in the same circle. Just keep you in the same circle. But the Bible says, we have these two powerful forces, and you need that. The power of the Holy Spirit and the power in the name of Jesus. So if you do not know Jesus, you cannot exercise the, the power in the name of Jesus. If you do not have the Holy Ghost resident in you, flowing out through you, you cannot exercise that power in the name of the, by the Holy Spirit. So the power of the Holy Ghost in you and the power in the name of Jesus will push down, push back, destroy, trample the foes that are lined up against you. From today, every enemy that has raised a limitation against you is brought down before you in the name of Jesus. He says, they shall gather, but not in my name, and they that are gathered against you shall fall for your sake. God knows. He knew they would gather, but he prepared us for the assault with the power that surpasses their power, the power of the Holy Ghost and the power in the name of Jesus. You must experience your uncommon breakthrough as you begin to understand and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit daily and understand and walk by the power in the name of Jesus by your faith. Now, these are the keys that unlock the doors to your uncommon breakthrough. And when you understand these keys, it becomes easy to push down the enemies. Now, let me say this. If you check the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, the Bible says, secret things belong to God. But the things that are revealed, so as we go into the world to reveal some some powerful secrets of the world. He said the things that are revealed belong to us and our children that will live thereby. You will have a meaningful living. You will have a progressive living. You will have a successful living. You will have a prosperous living. As you understand the mysteries that we are unveiling. Now, and one of those things is to know that there are demonic forces in operation to limit, but there are spiritual forces that knocks them down, that, 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 that tramples them down. And it's one of such spiritual force we are just about looking at, the force of sincerity. The force of sincerity. It's a strange subject but strange power to make things happen for you. Sincerity is absence of pretense. Sincerity is absence of deceit. Sincerity is absence of hypocrisy. Those are the kind of people God is wanting to unleash the blessings of the end time upon them. Because they will serve God without hesitation. They will love the brethren without hesitation. The service that the service it's not service to impress men. Oh, they see you, you are everywhere in church, but it is a service coming out of the depth of sincere heart. You are serving God sincerely because he has sincerely paid the price for you. 
Jesus never pretended in coming to die for you. Jesus was very sincere with his father. And the moment the church begins to be sincere in our service, not just the activity of service, but a service that is coming out of a, a very sincere heart, God will begin to unleash the blessings upon his people. You get ready because you, in this end time, the Bible says, God will bring forth the glory of the latter house that is greater and will be greater than the former. I see part of that glory. He said the silver is mine. Hey guys, chapter 2. And gold is mine, said the Lord. But he said, I'm going to shake the heavens. I'm going to shake the earth. I'm going to shake the sea. And I'm going to shake the land. People of God, the shaking has been on. The shaking is on. Globally, right now, there's terrific shaking going on. Economic shaking going on. Health hazard going on. But in the midst of this, he said, when I shake them, I will bring the glory, I mean, the desire of nations to this house. Desire of nations. The wealth of the nations. So I'll bring it to my house. And he said then the glory of this latter house, the glory of the church these latter days, will be greater than the former. It's going to pump the church, pump believers with the blessings that the earth are killing themselves for. He said the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. And that glory is, for one thing, to honor God in service. Awesome service. Sincere service. Now, there are a lot of people who are in the church hypocritically serving God. Hypocrisy is to pretend to be who you are really not. That's hypocrisy. You are giving people a false image of who you really are. Now, serving God with that sense denies you of a permanent eternal blessing. Serving God to impress people may, 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 may just be inviting disaster. Some people are just looking for temporary blessings. And since they hear when you serve God, God is going to bless you. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your water and your bread. And, and So they, 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 they jump on the bandwagon just doing activities in the church. May every service you render in the church from today be from a sincere heart. The sincerest of sincerity. And I'm telling you what, it opens the gates of heaven. It pours out the blessings of God upon you. I don't know how God is helping us to do what we're doing in the kingdom. But I just know that his hand is at work. Put your heart before him. Put your heart to serve him in all sincerity. A lot of people have trusted in riches. When your trust is in riches, you are trusting what does not abide. In the book of Proverbs, Chapter 23, verse 5. The Bible says, Will thou set your eyes on that which is not? Why does it say riches is not? Because until riches is in the established on the platform of covenant. Covenant is established on the platform of your relationship with God. Until riches is established on the platform of covenant. Covenant of serving God. Covenant of giving. Covenant of expanding his kingdom. Covenant of helping the widows and the orphans. No, those covenants, until riches established on those covenants, it doesn't really abide. Now, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 5 says, Will thou set thy eyes upon that which is not? For riches, riches, riches certainly make themselves wings, and they fly away as an eagle towards heaven. 
And that's the reason you have history of, story of people who were very rich. Yesterday and are no more. Because they are riches, not establishing a covenant of service. Not establishing a covenant of serving God. Developed wings and went away. Every blessing God brings into your life, into your family, from today shall be established on his covenant. Covenant of serving him with all of your heart. As people like John D. Rockefeller, they establish their wealth on a covenant of serving God. As people like, like, uh, like Demo Shakaria, they establish their wealth on the covenant of serving God. That's the man who will gather businessmen in hotels, prepare dinner and all of that, and preach the gospel to them. Establish their wealth on the covenant of serving God. God is not shy of blessing you. God is not shy of blessing you. He wants to bless you super abundantly. But he wants you to understand there's a force of serving him in all sincerity that will make those blessings abide. In Demoshakarian family, they are called aircraft family. Everyone in that family has a private jet. Blessed of God, and they become a blessing to the world. They use their wealth to establish a relationship between Egypt and Israel. When Demoshakarian promised Egypt that he will, he will establish their ranch and their dairy farming free of charge if they will stop attacking Israel. Under our Sadat, they signed an accord that has stopped Egypt since then from attacking Israel. Just one family fulfilling the prophecy of God that is Egypt and Israel shall be called my people. Just one family God wants to use your family to fulfill the, his prophetic war for the nations and for the end time. The time is now. The time is to serve God in all sincerity, to give to the kingdom in all sincerity, no hypocrisy, no pretense. That is sincere service. That's where the blessing of the Lord pours out. Hence family. Tomato, I mean, hence tomato, hence ketchup and all of that. Now, now, they know how to establish their wealth on the platform of covenant. That's the reason it's abiding. Colgate toothpaste and all the Colgate products, the wealth was established on covenant. William Colgate told God, give me the market in Europe and 50% of my profit will go into preaching the gospel. And God did. That, 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 that toothpaste is the only surviving toothpaste among its own generation of toothpaste. In the 60s, Colgate was already in the market. Every toothpaste in the market in the 60s are dead and buried. But Colgate is renewing the brand, is increasing. And, and, and why? Because he served the Lord in all sincerity. He covenanted his well before God. Listen, what God wants to do in your life is not just for you. It's primarily for his kingdom. That you lay for yourself the blessings. Against that day you are going to meet the Lord. So don't set your, your, your heart on wealth. When God brings wealth to you, it is to serve him. It's to bless your family. It's to bless people around you. And my prayer is, as you serve the Lord in all sincerity, the springs of glory shall fall upon you like waters, like the rains. The blessings of God shall flow towards you in the mighty name of Jesus. And now you understand something, that serving the Lord in sincerity springs from somewhere. When you, you, your fear of the Lord is genuine, the fear of the Lord must be the strong force propelling your everyday living. It becomes easy to serve the Lord in all sincerity. Where the fear of the Lord, reverential fear of the Lord, is, 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 is established. That's what makes you honor God with your life, your everyday life. You honor God because you fear God. Uh, he is a gracious God. He is a loving God. He deserves your honor. And so when you live in that atmosphere, you can actually serve him in all sincerity. 
all sincerity, without pretense, without deceit, without hypocrisy. And I say, it's not important whether you are a pastor or you are not a pastor. It's not important whether you are preaching every day to people or you are not. Now, it is the dominant factor in your eternal relevance. Whether you are serving the Lord in sincerity or in deceit, that's it. It's a dominant factor in your eternal relevance. Now, there are many pastors who are, who are pastoring and are not serving God in all sincerity. We don't need to put up a scheme. We don't need to be deceitful. We don't need that. We just need to serve in all honesty. God is faithful to his word. When you do what the word instructs, the, the promises of the word will be released to you. When you do what the word says, the promises of the word will come upon you. We need to serve God in all sincerity. The fear of the Lord in your heart precedes serving the Lord in all sincerity. Now, look at what Joshua says. Chapter 24, verse 14. It says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. See that? Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. That means if I'm walking in the fear of the Lord, it's automatic that my service in his kingdom will be sincere. If I'm not walking in the fear of the Lord, I could be serving the Lord, but in some, some elements of deceit and some elements of hypocrisy will just be mixed up there. And that's where, where, why many believers are not accessing what God wants them to have. That's why the heavens are not as open, the gates of wealth are not as open as what it should be. God is a good God. He's a loving God. He's a gracious God. He wants to pour out an astonishing blessing upon you. So in, you, in turn, will serve the church, will serve his kingdom, will serve the mission field, will serve the, the, the TV programs and that, that, that's going on. Ha hallelujah. He said, now therefore, fear the Lord. Fear of the Lord precedes serving God in sincerity. And serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the floor and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Now, when we do not fear the Lord, we could be serving God, but we're serving other gods along. Uh, other gods may not all the time be images or a shrine. Other gods could just be yourself, just yourself, just your family, just your business, just something that takes the place of God in your life, something. That is predominant in your life as a focus. Now, we could just be serving other gods. And my prayer is from today, your heart will be preoccupied with the fear of the Lord and your service will be a sincere service in the kingdom. And you are going to see the avalanche of the doors that will open, the favor of God that will come upon you, the loins of kings that will be losing in favor towards you. I speak that upon you, upon your business and upon your family in the name of Jesus. Foundation Faith Church Salem Family Worldwide presents Salem Outpouring Conference 2022 with Archbishop Samamaga, theme, The Triumph of Love, happening live in the city of Port Tackett from Wednesday the 9th through Sunday the 13th of November 2022, Salem City of Faith, number one, Faith Avenue, Roma Marcy, behind Liberation Stadium, ministering in the power of the Holy Ghost. His Grace, Archbishop and Dr. Mrs. Love Sam Amaga, Bishop David Onimisi, Europe, Bishop Enobong Ete, Lagos, Bishop Mark Jones, USA, Bishop John Ibenu, Bishop Israel Eze from Ghana, Bishop Ima Isong, Bishop Ken Esekaibe, Bishop Goody Oguama, Bishop Abraham Elijah, Reverend Isaiah Sam Amaga, Bishop and Reverend Mrs. Hilary Ogwelebune, host, ministering in music, Salem Stars and FDV Mass Choir. Expect the miraculous, anticipate the supernatural, get ready for the extraordinary. This is your time and your season is now. Don't miss it. Hashtag SOC 2022. Hashtag The Triumph of Love. Hashtag Salem Rivers. Give me the sound of
we believe that you were blessed by this message. For the continuation of this message, join us on all our social media platforms, same time, tomorrow. God.